Welcome to video number two on becoming a ninja with OneDrive. Uh, last we covered, uh, we just talked about fundamentals. Today we're going to talk about creating files. So let's get into it. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about creating files and how you can do it based on the web version as well as the desktop. And it's gonna be very interesting because we're gonna be following both patterns all the way through because I think it's really important for everyone to understand they can do everything in general between both ways and you need to know how to do both as you start to build your skills and become more of a ninja with the OneDrive. And as you start to learn that you can do both, sometimes in situations, you may only have access to one option. And so knowing that you can do that just allows you to be more flexible and be very productive. So let's get into it. I've got my screen shared where we kind of left off and uh, let's go from there. So as you see here um, in last the last previous video, uh, I got it so that my OneDrive, I logged into my web browser here. So this is how I did it. I logged into this website. You can get there from various different websites like you can go to Outlook.com, uh, Office 365, MicrosoftOnline.com, I think is another web link that'll basically take you here. Uh, the main idea is just get logged into your webmail, which gives you this kind of look. You can get here to this little waffle guy is what I call it, or Rubik's Cube. Uh, and then you go to your OneDrive, which brings me to where I'm at right here, right now. Now, what we did is we went ahead and hit this sync client right here. So under files, we hit sync. And this allowed us to get access to uh, the sync client on this computer. So it went through, and if you haven't gone through it, um, watch the previous video, and it will guide you through what you needed to do to kind of get this client working. So you can kind of see it busily working and syncing files. So let's get to creating some files. So let's say under the accounting directory that I wanted to create an Excel file. So in here under the web version, you can just use this new button, and you can just pick Excel workbook. And if I do that, it's going to bring me straight into the web version of Excel to where I can start editing this workbook. And let's just say we said um, accounting file. And, you know, let's say you want to merge and center, right? And then you have some data here, data here, data here, data here. So now that we have this data in here, we can come under here and I can change the name of it. I can say accounting file, for example. And if I click off, now it's changing that name to accounting file, or files, I guess is what I called it. Um, and now if I come under here, I can click on, let's just say that little arrow right here, I can now move that to wherever I want to. Uh, I could go to documents and say move that file here. So this gives you some moving options, which is kind of nice. And you can create a new folder up here in the corner. Uh, and, and these are just some features that you can kind of do. Also, one of the things that's kind of nice is let's say that after you're done editing the file and you just want to go to the root folder, that's how you do that. Sometimes people, when they open this file, they get kind of confused. They're like, how do I get back to where I was? If you just click on this and you click the, the folder tree, like maybe I just want to go to the demo folder. If I click that, it'll close out the web browser and take me to where that's at, which is right where I was here. See how that works? Now, if I click on accounting here, this is on the, the installed kind of client I have on this computer. If I open this up, look, there's the file that I just created. And if I open it up here, it's gonna open it up on the full-fledged version of the client on this computer. So the important thing for everybody to understand here is they're all in the same team. So as I'm creating files, either in the web browser or in the actual sync client, they're all the same. And I'm still working in them in unison. And if you really want to get something cool is uh, we'll show you later on how you can access these files uh, and you can share them with someone else and you can both be editing them at the same time. It's pretty cool. And we'll cover that shortly in another video. So the next thing I want to talk about is how you can create files on the actual uh, sync client. And it's very similar to like if, if you're used to having map drives on a server or things like that, those rules are pretty much the same. So let's dig into it. So here I am in this accounting folder, again, like we talked about. I can right click and say new 
Uh, there we go. Uh, new Excel file. There it is. <clears throat> I can rename it like I normally do. So I could say accounting file 2, let's just say. And now under accounting file 2, I can edit that file in the web version or the desktop version by just double clicking it like I normally would. And we just say accounting file 2. And if I click merge cell, there we go. And let's put a little more data. <laughs> uh, anyhow, uh, we're not doing a, 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 a video on how to do Excel files. But did you notice that right there at the very top? It saved it immediately. Well, what's the problem with that? For people that are used to saying, you know what? I just want to open this file to, and I'm going to make it file three. So let me go ahead and open this document up and let's make it file three. So I come in here and I'm gonna be, it's gonna be file three and then I'm gonna add some more data in here and I'm adding some more stuff. Watch what's gonna happen. In a second, this thing is gonna sync up automatically because it's doing it real time. So that data that I just did just replaced accounting file two. So for people that are coming from a server, what they're used to being able to do is just open this file up, make a whole bunch of changes, and then go file save as a copy. And when they do that, all the changes they just did didn't affect the original file. That's what they're used to thinking. They, they think, let me just open this file up, make a whole bunch of changes, I'll save it as a new file, and I didn't mess with the original file. I left it how it is. That's not how OneDrive works. It is real time saving as you're typing. So it didn't even really say save there, but trust me, it's already saved. So if I close it out and open it back up, it's already saved. I don't have the option to save as. So then you're just kind of like, dadgummit, I just deleted the base file that I wanted to have. Oh, I'm so frustrated, how do I get it back? Um, we'll do a video on this. It's called uh, Restore uh, from History, um, and we'll show you how to do that um, in a video coming up. But the concept that I'm wanting to try to make sure that you understand here is do not try that, okay? If so, in that situation, what you want to do is you want to copy this, you want to paste it, so you'll see it, it, it calls this, this, this file too, um, and then under here, I can just rename it right? I can call it file three. And then start editing. Now, when I'm opening this file up, I'm changing this file specifically. So now I can start changing it without worrying about it messing up file two. That's where a lot of people make mistakes when they're getting used to uh, OneDrive and it can really confuse them. The reason why they're doing this so let me let me just kind of let me kind of explain why they're doing this. Later on, I'm going to show you how you can edit files real time with multiple people. And the only way that they can do that is your edits are happening real time and being saved. This allows as you're sharing documents to collaborate with other people. And so what Microsoft decided to do is if you want to have that real time editing capability, the saves have to be instant. So that was a decision they made that changed conceptually how people need to understand when they're working with OneDrive. It's a great feature that you'll learn to appreciate, but it can draw some frustration out of individuals as they're trying to ma manipulate things like they're used to, and it's just not the right way to handle it. So that's a very important concept to understand when you're creating files. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Our next video is gonna be talking about how you can do the restore of history. So assuming that someone has created some files and made some mistakes, we'll show you how to get them back, okay? So stay tuned and we'll see you next time.